Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today we're taking a look at making the most of the HTC Advantage. If you haven't seen the previous video, there's a link just here. And if you have seen it all 33 minutes, I won't be making a video that long again. Then you will recall my rather unimpressive review, mainly caused because Windows Mobile 6 does not take full advantage of the capabilities of this powerful machine. So let's take another look. So the first thing to sort out is the screen. This has a full VGA screen, but the OS is locked to quarter VGA, much like the Toshiba 800, the Fujitsu Lux, or the diminutive N300 from Acer. Unlike a four or three and a half inch display, the five inch display on the HTC Advantage isn't too small to have in full VGA. So I'm using real VGA, link below. You'll see we've got three options here. We're currently set to 192 DPI. Now I assumed that DPI meant dots per inch and therefore a higher number would be a higher resolution. But for whatever reason, that's not the case here. So if we want full VGA, we actually need to go for 96 dpi. Once you've selected it, you need a quick restart for the settings to take effect. So straight away we've got much more screen real estate when going into applications and as you can see it's still quite usable in terms of size. The 128 pitches it between quarter VGA and full VGA so if your vision's not as good it's quite a nice compromise although some applications won't display properly and you'll lose menus. If you use a pocket PC program while in full VGA it displays as a quarter VGA so you effectively get this window. And if you do the same with a handheld PC program it tends to show up as half VGA. GA like so. Some of the built-in applications display slightly oddly, like the calculator. So instead of having large buttons, we now have small buttons, but it fills the screen. The wireless manager does something very odd, so it looks like it's trying to emulate the Pocket PC by using a quarter of the screen, but it's made the icons on the buttons as if it's trying to fill the screen. It's still completely usable, it's just a little odd the way it's displayed. Windows CE is a true multitasking OS. So one of the most frustrating things when moving from a handheld PC or a fully fledged PC to a pocket PC or palm sized PC is the absence of tasks on the start bar. It means swapping between programs is slow, often taking multiple clicks to do. And when the CPU starts to slow down, you have to go into the settings in order to see what's running. Quite frankly, this is a bit ridiculous considering a solution existed in Windows 95 and was already implemented in handheld PC. So unsurprisingly, there are a number of third-party apps which attempt to address this not insignificant flaw in the OS. So I'm using WK Task. So when first launched, um, we get a Today button and a menu button. Launching the menu gives us a few options. So we can close an application, minimize an application, show today, close all. Then we've got our preferences, functions, brightness, volume, and a launcher. So in terms of functions, we've got rotate, backlight, suspend, reboot, connect and disconnect and exit. On brightness and volume, we've got these nice sliders, which allow us to alter the sound very quickly and the brightness very quickly. Once on the Today screen, if you tap the top corner, you'll see it brings up the menu. So from here, if we pop into Preferences, you can see we've got quite a lot of options along the bottom. So a couple of things to set up. First of all, set up your offset. So what this is, if I just up this, you'll see it move across. This is where you want the actual bar to be. And this allows you to make sure that you're not hiding any notifications on the right side and that you're not covering up the start button on the left. There's a couple of other options there so you can get it to adjust the width when the time changes because as we go from say 9 to 10 we gain an extra digit and it widens the clock display. Moving on we've got a few more options left-handed right-handed. We can add a battery gauge across the top if I hit OK it'll activate it so it's added a line across the top bar and that's the battery gauge there. I'm not a big fan, so I'm going to turn that back off. The next option you want to have a look at is Actions. So this allows you, if you tap, you can minimize or close an application or do nothing or turn the backlight on, etc, etc. If you tap in the corner, tap and hold, I've got it set to close. Tap in Today, I've got Action Menu, so it brings up the options. Horizontal drag takes you back to Today. And a vertical drag brings up the launcher, which is the next excellent feature. So we'll skip past Skins and Design, which allow customization of your color scheme. Here in Launcher, we can add new items so we're just going to quickly add one 
let's add zip. Once that's done, you can assign a letter and then you can move these up and down to change positions in the launcher. So let's come out of here and we'll have a look at the launcher. So a down drag will bring the launcher up. And as you can see, it brings us shortcuts to install programs. Tapping on them, we'll then launch the program. So this is a real easy way of launching programs straight from the taskbar. If we go ahead and just open a couple of other programs, you'll see that it resizes all the icon bars as we go along and it makes it super easy to jump from one task to another. I can't believe they didn't build this into the OS. So Mobile Word isn't a bad application and if you're just doing basic text editing, for most people it probably has all the functions that they need. But if you want to be able to add and manipulate images in a document, use password protected documents, or open newer docx files, you'll need something else. So I've installed Softmaker's TextMaker 2010. The biggest issue with this is trying to register it. It used to be that you could order the great handheld resource CD and get a registered 2008 version. However, the CD is no longer available and 2008 doesn't have all the features that we've got here. So I'm just going to open one of my sample files. So this is a docx file. It does take a little while to load, don't get me wrong. And now it's finished loading, we're just going to zoom out a bit and you'll see not only has it opened the docx file, but it handles various fonts, highlighting, tables. The only thing it doesn't like is word art and it just blacks it out like this. Not only will it open newer docx files with almost complete formatting, but you can edit all those things yourself. In addition, if we look at the options here, not only will it open docx, but if we have a look in here, you'll see it'll open Softmaker's standard file, open office files, HTML files, and even pocket word files directly. Not only that, but if you open more than one document, it adds it as a second tab, which makes working on multiple documents really easy. Again, Excel Mobile is not a bad program, and we have finally gained the ability to create graphs on the go. Once more, it won't handle password protected files, it will flatten any graphs that you put in, and it won't handle any embedded images. Once again, as a replacement, I would recommend PlanMaker 2010. We have all the same issues we have with TextMaker 2010, which is that it's difficult to register if not impossible, and we only get a 30 day trial. But once again, this is the most powerful piece of Office software you can get. So not only will it open the new XLS X documents, but it will also handle password protected files, embedded images, and allow you to embed images yourself. There are even onboard drawing tools. So as you can see, the same file opened in docx, we've got a 3D graph, and we've got a text box, and we've got an embedded picture, none of which display in Word in Excel Mobile. There is an alternative if you need to deal with newer Excel, XLS X files, and that is Spread CE from By Design. This is still in development, a new version was released only a few months ago, and is still available for registration. So this is the XLX version, and it's opened the graph but flattened it. We've got our text box, although the colors have changed, and the image isn't there on this. So again, it opens it, but we can't actually see the graph. We can see the text boxes there and there's a picture box, but again, we can't open it. So it's not perfect, but it will open XLX S files. And as it's still in development, it's possible that these things will improve with time. The one thing it can't do is deal with password protected files. If that's a necessity, then TextMaker is your only option. PowerPoint Mobile isn't a very impressive piece of software. So as you've already guessed, I'm going to suggest presentations from Softmaker, their 2010 version. So this is a fully fledged PowerPoint on the go maker. 
you can create slides, add text, transitions, images, whatever you want. And then if you have the optional VGA out, you can display it direct to a new screen. I did try Conduit's Pocket Slides, which works very well on my Genada 720. However, it wouldn't install on here because it's a Pocket PC rather than handheld PC. And when I did copy the files across to get it to run, it clips the menu so it's not usable, unfortunately. The HTC Advantage lacks any kind of drawing program. You can't draw in Word, for example, and you can't change the stylus, thickness, shape, color when you're in Pocket Note. So instead, I've installed Pocket Paint. So this was designed for Pocket PCs, but works perfectly well on here. It is basic, but you've got all the uh, tools you'd expect, such as a fill tool, a color palette, basic shapes, the ability to select and manipulate images, or select and move images. It only has one option for saving, and that is as a bitmap, so it is a little bit limited. Again, I tried Pocket Artist from Conduits, which works really well on my Janada, but I couldn't get it to work properly on here. For music playback, I'm sticking with the audio manager on here. I did try Winamp, but it wouldn't work very well. It was just too unstable. If there's a better alternative out there, I'm open to suggestions. Pop a comment below. For video playback, unsurprisingly, I'm using TCMP, which works great on this device. This is a quarter VGA video under high compression, but it will now handle full VGA. And unlike the built-in media player, it'll handle DivX. Sadly, when it comes to browsing the internet, this machine is no longer up to the task due to the increased complexities required by web browsers. Long gone are the days when you could watch YouTube on your pocket PC. I have installed the newer Opera 10 mobile on here. There is a newer version because you can use Opera Mini, which runs under Java, but whichever one you use, you're going to struggle with compatibility. So now I've connected it to the internet. Let's have a look and see what it's like. So the first thing you'll notice is even though the Google homepage is extremely simple, this is very slow. Opera Mobile does allow tabbed browsing, so we can open a new tab and we'll see what the BBC News has to say. And it's finally finished loading. So that took so long, I've had three birthdays. Scrolling down, you can see it's quite usable otherwise, just the speed is the issue. If you still want to browse the web directly off your HTC Advantage or Pocket PC, I would recommend a look at FrogFind. FrogFind acts as a service that strips out all the non-important data, so what you get instead is just the text element. This makes it possible to navigate the web, although perhaps not the most satisfying of experiences. For ebooks, I'd recommend Moby Pocket Reader, so it'll read Moby formats as well as text documents and things. It's easy to customise, you can alter the colours, for example. It's got an auto scroll function, you can adjust the font easy enough to straight from the taskbar. It supports different orientations. The only thing to bear in mind if you download new ebooks, they tend to have DRM, which means you can't display them on this device as there's no way to authenticate them. But Gutenberg has thousands of sci fi books for you to read. Other genres are available. There are a number of other bits of software that we've not looked at today. You can, for example, put Google Maps on your HTC Advantage. And if you want to collect your emails, NPOP is an excellent service for that. I'm sure many of you have good software suggestions or alternatives to what have been suggested already. If that's the case, pop a comment below. I do love to get feedback from you. And as always, it's impossible for me to be exhaustive as there are so many bits of software out there. With these software enhancements installed, I think the HTC Advantage is certainly worth a second look. With the exception of internet browsing, it is a powerful organizational and entertainment tool with good screen, battery life, and a nice balance of portability and functionality. Add a Bluetooth keyboard and perhaps it's a rival for my Genada 720. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a thumbs up and a sub would be excellent. As always, my name's Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.